Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 839 that says similar string groups. Although this question is tagged as a hard question, but this question is very much simple. We have to just make sure that the condition given in the question is satisfied and the brute force approach will work here. So here you are given two strings x and y. These two strings can be considered similar if they both are equal, right? If they both are equal, then they both are similar. Else, what you can do is you can perform one operation that is to swap two letters of the string s that means if you perform one swapping operation in the string x and then it if it turns out to be equal to y then you can consider x and y to be similar right so either performing one swap inside the string x does it, it does it becomes to equal to y then similar or else if they are equal from the beginning then they are similar so for an example uh, tars and rats so if you if you swap r and t here of trs then it becomes rts right then the strings become equal so yeah we can consider this both strings as similar but if you consider str and compare with uh, let's say trs then they are not similar okay because uh, uh, you have to perform more than one swap to make this string equal to trs you cannot achieve trs from str in just one swap right so that's why these are not similar and that's why we group these three strings in one and this string in another group now one thing to note here is for a string to be in a same group they must be similar to at least one other string of that group so let's say here trs is similar to rats because if you swap r and t it becomes rats right so trs is similar to rats and arts is similar to rats because a and r are swapped if a and r are swapped then it becomes rts right so AR, A, ARTS is similar to RTS, although ARTS is not similar to TRS. This and these are not similar, but all but they can be considered in one group because this uh, string is at least similar to one of other string. So the condition to be in the same group is the word in the group, if and only if it is similar to at least one other word. So for each word, it has to be similar to one other word of the group. Then only you can combine to form them as one group. And at the end, we need to return how many such uh, groups are possible. And we need to return minimum of them, minimum number of such groups possible. Right? See, why minimum? Because you can make for each string, you can make a separate group, then also it is okay. But since we need to minimize the number of groups, we have to find the similarity between them and group them into one group. Right? Okay. So this uh, first input we have already discussed here in the example. Now for the second input, you can see that O, M, V and o v m is there so you can see the first o and o matches this m v and v m doesn't matches so let's say you consider this as string as and this as string y now swap m v then it will become o v m does this is similar to string y yes it is similar so we can may group them into one group right they both are similar so that's why we return one as our answer right else uh, if they both won't be similar then we would return two but since they are similar so we return one as our answer so guys, the question understanding is very much simple that first we need to find whether two strings are similar or not. Okay. So for an example, if you are given some string uh, as a string of error like this S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. So what you need to do is you need to find all the strings similar to S1. S1 is similar to S2, then S1 similar to S3, then S1 similar to S4, S1 similar to S5. Then S2 similar to S3. See, S2 similar to S1 is already done here. Then S2 similar to S4 and so on. Then again for S3, S4. Okay. Similarly, what uh, we have to do is we have to find similarity between all the strings. Such, then only you can group them. Because it situation can be something here like this. That S1 is similar to S3. Which S3, which is in turn similar to S2. So if you check only with one for loop. With one for loop like s1 similar to s2 s1 similar to s3 only this much then it will give you wrong answer because if you if you can see here that s1 is not similar to s2 but indirectly it is similar right directly it is not similar but since s1 is similar to s3 but s3 is in turn similar to s2 so indirectly this s1 s3 s2 would be in this one group right would be in, would be in the same group so that's why we have to run two for loops for each uh, string we have to check whether it is similar to other or not so that's why we will run a for loop from i from 0 up till n and inside this we will run another for loop for 
j equals to i plus 1 up till n, right? Why i plus 1? Because the previous are already messy. For s2, we begin from s3 because for s2, similar to s1 is already checked, right? So, yeah, here we have to check this way. Understood this that why we need to use two for loops. Now, what another thing to do here is, see, when two strings are similar, when s1 and s2 can be similar. So, this question must arise to your mind. When two strings are similar, this is the main thing that we have to check. Let instead of x1 and x2, let me take x and y. See, either x equals to y. Okay. So, when two strings are equal, then uh, the how two strings can be equal if the uh, number, if the characters are same, all characters are same and character uh, and all characters position is also same. Okay. So, all th if the all the characters are matching as well as the position of those characters are matching, then we can say that both the st uh, string is equal. But let's say uh, le we won't check this. Okay. What we would do is we would keep one parameter like miss match uh, like uh, we can say something like this count of mismatch character we can keep this count right how many characters are mismatch so let's say we will compare all the characters of string x with the string y and we if the if let's say x of i is not equal to y of i then we would what we would do we will simply do this increment this count right we would simply increment this count if any character doesn't matches now for the two strings to be similar what we have to check is whether this count whether this count equals to zero or it is equals to two why these two condition only see if the count of mismatch is equal to zero then both the strings are same this means x equals to y is true x equal equal to y is true okay this is one condition and this which statement tells is one swap in x will make string equals to y so this would become true after performing one swap in x it will become equal to y so this is also valid condition for the two string to be similar so that's why we would check that how many mismatch characters are there in strings x and y with the help of some counting pointer like this so if that pointer value means if this count value is zero then we can say both the strings are equal if the count value is two that means uh, by performing one swap in x it will become y so yeah for that case we would return true clear till here this both the condition so till now what we did is we check similarity for all the strings from uh, with the help of two for loops and to check whether x and y is similar or not we would do by checking the characters and keeping this count of mismatch characters okay clear till here now afterwards what we can do is we need to group them we need to group similar string right so let's say you are given some strings like this s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 okay so let's assume that s1 is similar to uh, s1 is similar to s3 so one way what you can do is you can create a graph s1 similar to s3 where s3 is similar to uh, s2 and s4 is similar to s5 okay you can create a graph like this where edge represent that two nodes are stream is similar or two strings are similar right and the edge represent that so whenever you find some uh, strings to be similar what you can do is so you initially you can create this adjacency matrix adjacency of i and j right uh, this i and j just represent uh, would represent the indexes of the string 0 1 2 3 4 now if there is an edge between two nodes what we can do is we can uh, simply do adjacency of i dot push back j and for adjacency of j dot push back i yeah we can do this we can create an edge and it is by directional it means the direction doesn't matter so we can push the edge backward also right correct so this is how we can create a graph got this we can create this graph we can create this graph so this is completely one graph and it has two component this is component one and this is component two so now this question uh, is simplified to finding the number of components in a graph right so for all the similar strings we are making an edge between them right we are making the edge between them with the help of adjacency matrix and then the equation boils down to finding the number of components in a graph right we need to find number of components 
So for this to find number of components, what you can do, you can simply do a DFS call, right? DFS call and try to visit all possible nodes, right? And in what DFS try to do, it try to visit all possible nodes. And uh, so for that, what we would do is firstly, uh, see, just keep in mind that we have to do DFS. So firstly, what we would do, we would create one visited array of size n and false. Okay. Then what we can do is uh, for a loop or uh, we would loop for from i is equal to 0 up till i is less than n and if visited of i equals to false then what we can do is we can make a dfs call from i and we can yeah, we can keep a count plus plus i will explain you what is this count and why we need this so also initialize count to zero okay now in this one, let's say we have started DFS call from S1. So DFS will, will be at here. So this from here, DFS call will call to this node. It will call to this node. Then again, it will return. It will return, right? So we have just traversed all the possible nodes in this DFS call from the graph, right? We cannot traverse this because there is, there is they, they are not connected. So here, we after first we increment the count. Then we check for node two. It is, uh, it is already visited. Node three is already visited. But after when the pointer would come to 4, we, when we are checking for node 4 or the string 4, then is this visited? No, this is not visited. So again, we have to make DFS call from here. Like this was DFS 1. Here we have to make DFS 2, means the second DFS call. And here we will visit node 4 and node 5, right? So that's why the number of times you make a DFS call, that many different components would be there. Because in one DFS call, we will traverse and visit all the nodes that are there in a given tree all the nodes that can be visited in the current DFS call, right? But if there is some different component, some separate component in a given graph, then at that time, we have to make different DFS call, means we have to again make some DFS call. So that's why the number of times or count of times the DFS call is being made, then if that many times, that many numbers of different components would be there in a given graph, right? That many different number of components would be there. So that's why we would we will simply use this counter to count number of DFS call that we are making means in the first dfs call we can see that uh, the node 4 and 5 are not visited so whenever visited of 4 would come it would become false so that's why we have to make a dfs call again and that's why our counter will increase and this count would would be nothing but number of dfs call and this would be nothing but number of components so i hope you guys understood this logic and now you can write the decode for the dfs yeah, you can write the code for the DFS and talking about the time and space complexity of DFS approach. The time complexity would be big O of n square into m and space complexity would be big O of uh, m square, right? No, not m square. It would be big O of n square. Uh, see, uh, first talking about time complexity. See, if we, since we are running two for loops, right? As we discussed, we are running two for loops, inner for loops, two inner for loops. That's why the time complexity for that is n square. And this M is for checking the similarity of two strings. See, what we have discussed here is we have to found count of mismatch characters. So let's say if a string is of size M, then uh, for the M times internally inside this for loop, there would be again for loop to match all M characters, right? So here would be three for loops. So that's why our time complexity would be N squared into M, right? And for this DFS call, in the worst case, this DFS call will take big of N squared time complexity. So that is already included. So yeah, it, we can say it is big of N squared. And the space complexity would be nothing but big O of n square because we are using adjacency matrix here. Adjacency matrix would take big O of n square time complexity. This visited array will take big O of n, but overall, as we are taking n square, so yeah, we will count that in the space complexity. Now, guys, this is one approach. This DFS is one approach to find number of components in a graph. But what if we don't have to create this? What if we don't want to create this adjacency matrix? Let's say then also it is possible. How? The simple answer is disjoint signed union. So whenever you need to group as some elements, group elements like strings or something, the one data section that must come to your mind is disjoint and union. It, it helps in grouping the elements, right? So yeah, this is the code snippet of the original DSU. I haven't changed anything inside this code snippet. I use as exactly what is this DSU states. Then what I did is I created this DSU object of this DSU class of a size n because there are n different strings in this strs this is the first for loop this is the second for loop 
inside the second for loop we are matching the uh, we are matching the characters and finding poses on each mesh or the count of characters that are not matched and if the count of characters is equal to zero that means the strings i and j is equal or by swapping one of the by swapping swapping one time that is changing two characters indexes in one of the string after that they become equal that means mismatch characters is equal to two then in that case what we can do we can make both the strings similar we can consider both the strings as similar now for that for i first did i find parent that means if the current parent of i string i and string j are not same then only we have to we will make this function we will call this function make union if they are same then don't need to we don't need to make call this function make union uh, so you must have some basic understanding of find parent and make union so find parent so let's say if s1 is similar to s2 then uh, in order to group them to group them what we have to do is we have to make their parent same this is the condition in order to group them in order to group two strings we have to make their parent same Th this is what we do in a dsu to group the elements so first we check if their parents are same or not by using this find parent function call if they are not same then we have to group them so for that i decrement the count same initially i took count equals to n because at a max there can be n different groups right and each time we are uh, uh, because for the n strings n different string there can be n different groups right but each time we are grouping two of the strings from n strings i decrement the count right and then to group them i call make union function so this make union function will do nothing but it, it will simply uh, make uh, the parent of either one string same to the parent of other string so this is what make union does so guys whenever we do something like grouping must uh, you must try to follow this dsu approach although this question can be solved by either dfs or bfs but this dsu is a better approach is what i think because this dsu data structure is made for grouping only so yeah use it whenever you want to group some of the elements okay now talking about the time and space complexity for this dsu approach the time complexity here is big of n square into m and space complexity here is big of n right see this n square into m we already discussed see there are two for loops that will take n square and inside this second for loop this is running for big of m times so yeah n square into m would be time complexity space complexity is big of n because this dsu would is of size n so that's why our space complexity is reduced here in dfs it was taking n square for the adjacency matrix uh, or adjacency list but here it will only take big of n so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel thank you